Hi, I'm Mike Ono, the Ingroove in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I'm going to do another review and comparison. This is essentially where I take many, many copies of this here album, which is Muddy Waters Folk Singer, the record I'm going to be doing today. And I'm going to be going over the best sounding versions of this record. If you are, say, not crazy like me and have to own 25 different variations of this record, and you're just a normal person and want to own one, don't want to buy them all, listen to everyone for hours on end, decide which one's the best, and then keep it, this is the video for you because I'm going to do that work for you. Chess, not really known for audiophile records. Great blues records, great soul records, you know, on their offshoot labels. Not really known for audiophile records. This is the rare exception where they actually recorded a dynamite sounding record. Right here I have a black label first pressing, you know, the most desirable, most collected chess records are the first pressing black chess label you know without the chess pieces the silver writing and just the black paper label the very most desirable the very most collectible i think i paid years ago for this record maybe 700 bucks it's a really really clean copy probably an ex copy of the record not really easy to find in this condition a lot of old blue, old blues records are not but that's about it Chess are pretty crummy sounding records from the 50s and early 60s. I'm not sure if they maybe put sandpaper particle additives into their vinyl, but they were low quality, crummy sounding records in general. So I'm going to actually put this highly collectible, highly desirable record at the very bottom of the sound list for quality. Uh, if you're a collector, I mean, it's a must have if you like early, you know, American blues and you collect original artifacts, this would be great. But if you are going for sound, that is not the record for you. That is in mono. So the first pressings were in mono. They came out with stereo a little later on that release. But the album was originally recorded in stereo. So this is an original UK pressing on Pi International. So the chess original chess recording, it's so hard to kind of gauge how that record sounds. One, because this is the most, if, if there was ever a record to kind of push the sale of CDs forward, digital music forward in the 80s, I'd imagine Folk Singer was one of them because it's such a quiet, intimate record. It's all acoustic, it's Muddy Waters playing acoustic guitar, singing, I'd imagine the only thing that was electrified maybe was the uh, microphone with a little bit of, uh, you know, a little voltage going into the microphone. But other than that, it's an acoustic record. Very quiet record. There's not a lot going on. It's mostly muddy waters and an acoustic guitar. The problem with that is when you're playing on an old chess record, they're horribly, horribly noisy. I don't know if... You know, I've had a few of them, but I don't know if the grooves are distorted, if the record is distorted because of the vinyl. It's very tough to figure out what's going on and why it actually sounds bad. bad. It's just many, many things that have never been something that's avoidable with vintage 50s, early 60s chest pressed records. When you get to this UK pressing, a little bit quieter, a little bit better, but they're not very dynamic. That's the thing you notice about the earlier recordings is they are a little bit more pushed together. You don't really get the sense of scale when Muddy Waters is singing. Because keep in mind, there's not much that you're listening to other than him and his voice and a little bit of, uh, little bit of you know, drum tapping. So with this, a little less distorted, a little bit quieter vinyl, but the sense of scale isn't there. Okay, so then Chess sold out in the early 70s. They sold to GRT. This is the GRT pressing. So a little bit later into the 70s, we have the GRT pressing. Vinyl is significantly better. This copy is a lot better, has the sense of the original, but, you know, sound-wise, I have a feeling like this is the sound they were kind of going for. Uh, you can't really hear it, though, for the horribly noisy and crummy vinyl that Chess was using back in the 50s and early 60s. But it's weird because as I show you these, I'm kind of showing you these records in chronological order from when they were released. And it seems they get progressively better and better and things get progressively fixed as we go up in the years. 
and this is no exception. Really good sounding record, not bad. I don't, I would, you know, I would own this for significantly less money over an original black label if it was just for sound, but there's so many better options than this. Now, if we go just a couple of more years in the future from when GRT sold to all platinum, before they sold to, I think they sold from platinum to MCA, and then I think their final destination was Universal, who now owns the chess catalog. This, I find the vinyl a little bit quieter. It's a different mastering, very similar in sense of scale to the original, but a little bit quieter. And I can't tell you how important this record is to have on the quietest vinyl possible because, again, it is so, li there's so little going on musically here that it can become overwhelmingly distracting if you have a noisy pressing of this. You know, the, the drawback of vinyl, and I'm a huge proponent of vinyl, but becomes very present on this type of recording if it's not, you know, it becomes the fourth instrument in the room if it's not done on really quiet vinyl. But this actually is surprisingly quiet. So, so far, I mean, I'm kind of doing these in order of which I would own. And it seems like we're getting farther away from the original. The price of these are coming down considerably and they're getting better sounding. Then we got this anomaly from the 90s. Mobile Fidelity. Anadis series. So, after the original Mobile Fidelity stopped making records on the original Japanese JVC Super Vinyl. That's the traditional MoFi vinyl that you hold up to a light. It's relatively thin, probably 130, 140 grams. You hold it up to the light and you can see through it. Along came the 90s. They switched to this Anadis. They stopped making the JVC Super Vinyl in Japan, I believe. So now we have these 200 gram Anadis titles. This is not particularly one of my favorite records sound wise. This is actually EQ'd in a really odd fashion to where the instruments kind of get lost. The emphasis is on muddy vocals, which is fine, but the instrumentation kind of gets really lost in it. It's also not cut as kind of hot as I would say the originals were all cut. The originals, the 70s pressings. Uh, you got to turn this one up a little bit more, but the equalization is a little bit off. Also, Many anadisks from the 90s, and I've got a lot of them, suffered from pressing defects. This is actually really noisy vinyl. Uh, the 70s, late 70s, all platinum pressing I had is actually quieter than this. And this is a mint original that I opened myself and only played it a couple times. But it's pretty noisy vinyl right from the manufacturer. That's just how it came. So, pricey. Not a very inexpensive record to own. It's not something that I would recommend. You're paying for Mobile Fidelity's stripe on the top when it comes to this. I'm the first person to come out and tell you I love collecting Mobile Fidelities. Records that I'll never own. Uh, the collector in me wants to own everything. So I've got not only the Steam Locomotive soundtrack, you know, where they recorded Steam Locomotives uh, in the early years. I've got the Thunderstorms, Mystical Mood Orchestra. I've got... Barry Manilow's greatest hits, stuff that I would never listen to. Melissa Manchester, because I love the label so very much, I collect all of it. But this is not one of their better titles. Uh, this is not the same mobile fidelity that exists today. It's really a different company, different ownership. And uh, yeah, this was not one of their better titles. It's just got a weirdness about it, equalization-wise, to where I feel like almost, and this is me kind of, guessing, I feel like they kind of boosted the mid-range to kind of bring out Muddy's vocals, but other things got kind of lost in the soundstage. Okay, so what was my big surprise of this whole shootout? Well, this is the biggest surprise, and now, now we're getting into some good stuff. Now we're getting into the stuff, if I could own any of them, I wouldn't be too disappointed with any of these further titles. But here's the big surprise. So the late 80s, Pretty much most of the chess catalog was out of print. MCA took it over and pretty much did a big reissue campaign of the chess catalog. This is the chess, the original master series. These have become a little bit more desirable because the word has kind of got out how good this series is for the chess label period. They're all analog. The vinyl on this is extremely quiet. This is a blue label pressing, has the blue label. 
and then you'll see this little graphic is added to it that says the original chess masters all analog extremely quiet vinyl it blows me away how quiet the vinyl actually is and that's kind of the case with a lot of these original chess masters so cut from the analog tapes really quiet and has a presentation uh I would say similar to what the original intent of this was, but the dynamic range has been opened up. So now we've got that original sound stage to where, you know, you feel like the sense of scale is accurate to what it would have been in the room. You know, you can kind of picture Muddy, you know, you can kind of picture the band in the room, but you can get a much better sense of scale because the dynamic range is there. This is still a sub $50 record, and this is an extreme bargain. Uh... So yeah, okay. So I'm gonna have to talk about these next ones kind of all at once because they're all kind of related and they're all kind of somewhat been released recently. So I've got a few other titles here. I've got the newest version of this, the Mobile Fidelity One Step Folk Singer. This is one of my favorite series of vinyl records ever done. They're done on JV, uh, the new version of JVC Super Vinyl, which is, you know, other than being semi-transparent, extremely quiet, probably doesn't have too much in common with the original from a chemical standpoint. I'm not 100% sure. Not my field of expertise. But the look and the sound is really, really close. It is, in my opinion, the absolute best vinyl made today. So as a series, these things are exceptionally quiet. They are as quiet as as vinyl as you can purchase in 2022. Uh, it's not a compound that's exclusive to Mobile Fidelity. It's used by Impex, it's used by Kraft. Uh, it's pressed right now, from the best of my knowledge, exclusively at RTI in California, but it is not a compound that's exclusive to any one label. It's extremely expensive to manufacture, so a lot of companies don't choose to do it, and it's very difficult to work with. I heard the rejection rate is really, uh, it's crazy, you know, the amount of duds you get from a manufacturing standpoint with the VR900 compound branded by Mobile Fidelity as Super Vinyl. But if it was, I mean, there is going to be no quieter version of this album than the Mobile Fidelity One Step. Okay, so let's talk about the sound of it. But let me show you a few other things I've got. Bernie Grunman. This is a test pressing of the 45 RPM version of the record that was done by Classic Records. Okay, so here I've got the Classic Records 45 RPM, and then I've got the 33 and the 45 RPM of the record. These all use the same metalwork. The Classic 33 and the Classic 45 RPM use the same metalwork as the Analog Productions titles. What ended up happening was when Classic Records went out of business, it was sold to Analog Productions, Analog Productions now has all the original metal work from Classic Records, so they use the same metal parts to manufacture these. I will say on, you know, in general, this is a test pressing, and this is noisy. That is very common with Classic Records. Classic Records you know, vinyl quality control in the day was pretty crummy. I've gotten multiple Classic Records titles to where right out of the box, or packaging, there was giant scratches, clusters of scratches, marks, major defects, unplayable records. That was really common with classical records back in the day. So much so, by the end of the classic records era, they were actually selling a service, the white glove service, to where you bought the record directly from them, but they would open it and inspect it before they sent it to you, and they charged you extra money. Tough to think about in the internet age. I don't know if you could do that today. I'm going to make this product, but... If you don't want any defects, I'll charge you a little bit extra money and I'll make sure I don't send you out a dud. But that's what it was with Classic right at the end. The Analog Productions vinyl is extremely quiet. Significantly quieter than the Classic record. So if there's ever a time where the Analog Productions titles going back doing old metal work from a Classic stamper, I always typically prefer the Analog Productions. I haven't run into one where I've said, oh, the... Classic records is better because the vinyl they used just wasn't as good as what Analog Productions is using. Okay, so these are both Bernie Grunman, the 33, the 45, the Classic 33, the Classic 45. 
Bernie Grundman cut from the original analog master tapes, right? Okay, I actually place the mobile fidelity one step behind those. Let me talk to you about why. Now, this is really weird because in my opinion, almost every single thing that mobile fidelity has done with the webs, with the one step, almost all of them are definitive. As a series, they make a lot of the absolute best sounding version of a record, you know, when it comes out. They're really good. They're cut really hot. And with this record, it is cut really hot. Okay, so one of the problems I have with the mastering of this is it's cut really hot. You're going to get a little bit more distortion on Muddy's vocals with this than you do with the Bernie Grunman cut classic or analog productions. This has not got a laid back feel. So for certain records, this form of mastering is dynamite. Santana, Braxas, there's a reason why that's almost a $3,000 record now because that form of mastering, that really hot, really dynamic mastering works extremely well for Santana Braxis. When it comes to this, I kind of envision myself in a dark room with a glass of uh, whiskey on the rocks. And this record doesn't have that smooth, natural flow that you get with Bernie Grunman's cut. I wish this, JV, this, this VR900 compound was used by other people because a really strong case for this record is you're dealing with a record that's so obnoxiously quiet because again, it's muddy and his acoustic guitar. This is like hands down the lowest noise floor, the best, lowest, quietest version to where it's, the more I listen to these VR900 records, super vinyl records, it's, it's, it, it gets a little bizarre. You drop the needle, you hear the pop, and then you're like, wait a minute, what happened? Is something wrong with my stereo? Why did it turn off? It didn't turn off. It's just as a record listener, you're not listen, used to listening to records that don't have any noise until the music starts. But that's what you get with these. But because of the way it's cut, it's hot, it's a little bit more in your face, uh, it throws off the soundstage for me. My preference is not this. When it comes to these, my preference for the top three would be this, that late 80s series would be up there as well. I mean, it's hard to kind of put between the two of these, but I would say of the top three, I would probably put this one step as the third best, but I would put the Muddy Waters 33 as maybe number two and the 45 as number one. I mean, the and this has been the 45 RPM version of this has been on my shootout or my top 100 imprint analog records you should own. All the different lists I've done, this always appears on the top. <laughs> and the reason being, it is so exceptionally well done. Bernie Grunman did a home run on this when he did this 20 years ago for classic. I really wish we could get this on VR900, you know, vinyl. I think that would be the ultimate, ultimate version of this record. I really truly feel there is room for improvement if Analog Productions ever decided to use VR900 compound, you know, for their vinyl. I mean, that would be the ultimate for this record, but this record is, you know, I get the idea with this version that this is the way the record kind of was intended to sound, the way it intended to flow, had a nice, smooth, natural vibe. The vibe you get from your buddy hanging out in the living room and playing and singing the acoustic guitar. This has it. Just on a little bit noisier vinyl. Oddly enough, it was up to me. I would take... And the classic records versions I have are really all over the map, but the couple of classic records I've had of this, and I've had other versions of it, because these came out, I got rid of them and I just kept the test pressing because, you know, it's, it's cool. It's a test pressing, right? But if it was me, man, you're going to buy a lot of classic records in general before you get really quiet ones. It's such a crapshoot. It's not worth it when you now have a $60 and a $40 version of this record that is in print and dynamite. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that is it. 45 RPM, number one, 33 RPM, number two. Stay away from the classic records type. <laughs> Not worth it. Noisier vinyl. Again, it's one of the few times I've ever listened to these mobile fidelity titles and have said, huh, I like such and such better. It very seldomly happens. But this is one of the uh, those rare occasions. But again, 
I strongly, just as a piece of advice, not even anything to do with the Muddy Waters Folk Singer, but I strongly recommend this original Master Series stuff for the chess label. Rumor is that the chess catalog burned up in the Universal Fire, so this might be the last time a lot of these records were ever done from the original Analog Master tapes. Some tapes are survived. You know, the Muddy Waters Folk Singer maybe survived. Other tapes probably survived. Not every tape is in the vault at the same time when the fire comes. Stuff could be out for, you know, production reasons, whatever the case might be. Only they know the truest inner workings. But if that is the case and the chess catalog has burnt up, this classic, this, uh, excuse me, the original Master Series would be the last hoorah from the analog tapes on really quiet vinyl from chess. So well worth picking up. And there's a lot of titles on there. Chess, you've got, uh, they did checker titles, the Bo Diddley, but they essentially went back MCA and redid a lot of that catalog. And man, that is just bang for the buck. What a deal that is. And if it ever got to the point in the future to where these things go out of print and end up being two, three hundred dollar records, and those original masters were 20 bucks, I would say that, you know, that would be a strong contender for something to listen to. But right now, with these being in print for retail, this is the way to go, guys. All right, so check us out on the website, www.theingroove.com. And again, there's a lot of these other comparison videos. I've done probably 20 of these at this point in time. I really enjoy doing it, some more than others, but this has been an actual fun one to do because this is an absolutely fantastic sounding record. All right, guys, until next time.